Hi, I'm Kyle Benson. I'm a product manager inside of the cloud operations team. And today I'm going to be walking you through how to interact with third party processes uh, running on GCE virtual machines using the new cloud ops agent. Let's get started. Uh, what you'll notice in my environment here is I have a couple of things. I have this default, uh, pretty simple Terraform file. Now I've already used this to provision the infrastructure that I'll be working with. Uh, we like to use Terraform a lot here at Google when we provide uh, ways to you know, spin resources up. Terraform is one of the things we make it really easy to get started with. And so I'm using tools that I think will be easy for you know, people watching this elsewhere to get started with. And uh, we'll provide some of the repositories and resources for this in the future as well. So we have a couple of instances already spun up. We've got three VMs. And what we're actually going to do today is deploy the new Cloud Ops agent as well as an Nginx server to each of those systems. Uh, using uh, Ansible. And so Ansible is a configuration management tool that makes it really easy to manage instances at scale. And it uses a couple of uh, you know, existing protocols like SSH, uh, and it uses Python on Linux systems to make it really easy to get started and interact with those systems. So before I get started, there's a couple of things I have to do just to make sure that we're ready to go. The first one I'm going to do is I'm going to run uh, Ansible-M, and we're going to ping these systems. I'm going to specify that I want to ping all of them. And then we're going to specify the key file that I'm using, not the Kyle file. Oh, there we go. SSH, Google, Compute, Engine. Cool. So I just ran a really simple ping module inside of Ansible. And what that actually does is it just reaches out to the systems, ensures that I can connect, and then it exits. It doesn't make any changes to the system, uh, nothing too wild going on. And inside my inventory file, I've already defined what these three systems are, and I have an SSH key set up for, for them to interact with. Let's go ahead and run this playbook. Now, before I do that, I guess I should show you what happens in this playbook. So we have a really simple role here, this uh, Google Cloud Ops agent role, where we take a lot of the work underneath uh, and just make it really easy to present to you. Now we provide the ability to install the Cloud Ops agent in a bunch of different ways. You can do it through the UI. So if you're on console, um, if you're on the Google Cloud console, you can do it from there. You can also use Puppet, Chef, Terraform, or Ansible. Uh, and we provide the mechanisms, mechanisms to make that easy for each of them. So here we'll use the role. And then below that, we have a couple of tasks. One's going to install Nginx. Then we're going to template these files out, make sure that the configuration is present for Nginx. Then we'll install the ops agent configuration, make sure those are OK, and that it knows to track Nginx. And then we're going to restart the services. So it's pretty simple in terms of like what it's trying to do, but it's going to make our deployment really easy. And as we start to do this for more and more systems, it really reduces the level of effort that we need to, to manage in terms of automating this across all these environments. So let's specify Ansible Playbook, playbook.yaml. Now, Playbook is an arbitrary name. It can be named whatever you want. I just find that it's really easy to name it for the you know, context of this video and as we get started uh, to make it easy to find. Uh, from there, we're going to specify the inventory we're working with, which is inventory.yaml, and specify that key file one more time. And we'll let this run through. OK, so it's already started. One of the really nice things about working from Cloud Shell is that I actually can use the gcloud command to connect to these systems first, make sure that I can SSH. It actually uh, associates the SSH key with it at that point and then stores it locally inside of my Cloud Shell. Um, that makes it really easy for the purposes of this demo to get you know, sort of up and running. You can run that through a loop and just make everything available to you. Uh, and, and then you know, just have everything get automatically connected to it. One of the nice things about the ops agent is that when we deploy this, it's a single agent in terms of the RPM that we provide, but there's actually two systems running underneath. One is FluentBit, which does the log collection, and the metrics are actually collected by the OpenTelemetry collector, which is a relatively new collector for us and part of the CNCF foundation. Uh, it's a new way or sort of a more uh, modern way of collecting metrics across systems, and we've been uh, really excited to work with it and adopt it. So we've been providing a bunch of different third-party integrations for it, trying to make it as easy as possible, with uh, Nginx being one of them. We've also provided integrations for Redis and Apache and MySQL, and a bunch of other integrations and third-party services that are going to be coming uh, later this year and early next year. So with all that being said, uh, if we take a look at this playbook, we can actually see that it ran through successfully. And I'm just going to scroll to the top here. You know, the, the Cloud Ops agent did some pre-flight checks, made sure everything looked good there, installed the agent, 
And then a little further down, we uh, just set everything up to get the, um, the configuration going. So we started Nginx, we started the ops agent with these new configuration files, or I should say we configured them, and then we restarted the agents and the Nginx agents. And we should be ready to go now. So if I go into my dashboards, I'm just gonna refresh this page real quick to make sure everything I need is there. And if I wanted to explore a little bit about my systems, I could do that by jumping into VM instances. And if I scroll down here a little bit, you can see that I have a couple of different instances here. So I have three instances from a GKE, a Kubernetes cluster deployed on Google Cloud. I also have these three that I'm managing. Now, the, the GKE instances, you don't install the agent to. That's something we manage for you by default. We're on these individual instances, we're actually deploying the agent individually. And you can sort of see a little bit more information about these. If I wanted to, I could actually copy this IP address and jump in and see that you know I am serving content. This is my, my internal IP, that's the project that I'm working on. And we're gonna spin that down after this demo. And then from there, um, oh, from there, we're actually gonna take a look at this system, or if I wanted to, it could actually jump into my processes here and look at all of my processes across the entire system. So let's do that. Now, you might not, you might not see a ton of activity from, uh, the, uh, from the, the environment right now, right? We're not doing a ton with the Nginx systems on this, so it's likely already served that service and then sort of exited. Uh, and we can see across here, we have a bunch of different telemetry uh, across their environments, you know, top CPU processes, top resident memory. This is all collected by the ops agent and sort of provides a larger fleet level view of what's going on with your system. If I go back to my inventory, I can click on this ind individual system and see uh, what's going on with it. I can get a little bit more about the host utilization for it. I could scroll down if I wanted to and actually see the processes individual to the system. If I scroll over here a little bit, we can sort of see everything that's there and we can go through if we had more services as well. So let's go back to our dashboards page here. And let's say I wanted to get sort of a better view of what's going on with my Nginx system. After all, we deployed this to actually track that Nginx environment and we want to better understand what's available there. We try to make it really easy using the, the Cloud Ops agent and some of our sample dashboards to immediately get value and understand what's happening with those systems. So to install one of those, I'm actually going to go to my sample library here, and you can see all the dashboards that we have here. This is also available on GitHub if you wanted to check that out. You can go to that link up here. But I'm actually just going to focus on this Nginx overview one. So if I click on this one, I can do a couple of things from here, but I'm actually just going to preview it. Now, you'll notice um, you know, this dashboard is based on the Google's Ops agent. So you can learn more about that, what metrics are available, and you can go into the documentation to see what's supported. Uh, but for today, I don't need to know everything that's there. I'm just going to go ahead and import this sample dashboard. And from here, if I'm not going to edit any longer, which I'm not, I'm just going to move into uh, switching the view mode. And now I can actually see across all these instances some of the activity that I've had over the last uh, hour or so. So we have a, a really simple spike in request rate, and that was probably the instance that I interacted with. Uh, we can see concurrent connections. We can see the connection rate. We can also start to see information specific to the, the, the host VMs, so CPU percentage, memory, as well as Nginx VMs by region. So we get a top level view of our Nginx service across all of these. And all of these dashboards can actually be used to mix into other dashboards if you wanted to. So for example, let's say you wanted to build a, you know, a load balancer in front of this and you wanted to track the load balancer and the Nginx VMs across a single dashboard. You could use these metrics to do that as well. You could also set up alerts on these so that if you were having a problem with you know, concurrent connections or you saw a large increase in you know, um, request rates, you could do a couple of things. You could create an alert, you could convert this to an alert chart, and once a threat hole is reached, receive an alert. Uh, or you could also dig into these more individually if you needed to do that. So that's a really quick example of what you can do with the Cloud Ops agent. Today, we use it to, well, first we installed it using Ansible. Then we configured the ops agent to look at our Nginx systems, and then we aggregated that information across all three systems. So I hope you found that helpful, and thanks again for watching.